<laughs> MCAT is <laughs> MCAT is easily like so far the hardest exam I've done in my life and the reason is because you're not taught how to take the MCAT like other exams um, like in nursing school we have a licensure exam from day one of nursing school you're taught towards the licensure exam in med school there's a licensure exam from day one you're taught towards so you know how they ask questions and you know how to answer but for MCAT there is no nobody teaches you how to study for MCAT. There are MCAT courses, but like just the style of the questions, like they are not going to ask you, oh, what is a flower? They're going to give you an a, like a comprehension passage on a flower, and they will ask you, in what way can you describe this phenomenon? Instead of just asking you what is a flower, and you have like seconds to read a comprehension passage and answer questions on it. So it, it, it can be like a lot. I would say to anybody that is thinking about going to med school, do not rush the MCAT because I can assure <laughs> you that if you rush, you will fail. Like it's not about you being smart. It's about you knowing how to answer the questions and being able to pace yourself because it's an eight hour exam. So you need to Eight know. hours? Yeah, it's eight hours. Bro, what type of writing? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the many eight hour exams you will write in med school. Just get wow. used to it but um so you have to like you have to give yourself time to study for that exam because it's not like any other exam you've ever done um so you have to take time if you need an extra course i would recommend getting a course they are expensive but like for me thankfully i got a scholarship from like an association joint associations by oh me. yeah definitely. joint associations in your school like i was in i wasn't in a lot but i was in all the medical ones because that's my interest and that's mm -hmm. what i'm trying to do with my life so I was in Black Black Health Professionals um, Organization at UT Austin, and that's where I got the scholarship for MCAT for the MCAT prep class from. And you also get to meet like like-minded people. You get to meet doctors. That's how you can find shadowing opportunities because it's actually really hard to find. Like if you go to a doctor and tell them you want to shadow them, they will most probably say no. And with the times we're in now with COVID, it's even harder to get like non-essential people into hospitals. So like join associations because they can provide you that opportunity to meet with doctors. Um, and then, yeah, you take the MCAT. So it depends, it depends on when you want to start med medical school. Some people want to start med school right after undergrad. Some people want to work for a year before they start. So if you want to start med school once you graduate from college, you have to take MCAT in your third year of college because the medical cycle is a full year oh yeah so if you want to start med school in august uh where you're in august of 2022 mm -hmm. you have to take mcat by may of 2021 oh wow because it okay. it takes a month to get the result of mcat mm -hmm. so you write mcat in may you get some people even take it earlier because mm -hmm. if you take it and you're not pleased with your score you can actually you take it again them. okay um but it takes a month to get the results so you have to factor that into your application time because many people like the applications open in may mm -hmm. so that's why a good number of people take theirs in like april may so that when the applications op open they can be one of the first people to get it in and then oh, hear back from med school, school applications open med in school, may yeah oh yeah, okay they open in okay may. i'm not sure i think it's may 1st but don't quote me on that i think they open like may 1st and then they'll close like at a certain time so they have like they have primary applications, then they have secondary applications, then they have interviews, then if you don't, like if you make it to an interview, but you're not offered a place, then you're on a wait list. Okay. And then you'll find out like much later. But basically, um, applications going like May, you start getting secondaries in like July. Mm -hmm. So secondaries are, primaries are from that AMC I talked about. So mm -hmm. on AMC website, you're going to do this the application is, and whatever. This is AMC, right? AMC. Yes, yes okay. AMC. Um, so you're going to do the application, complete it. You fill out like it's a very long application. You have to put a personal statement. You have to put like all the classes you've ever taken in college. You have to enter them out one by one. You have to put in all your volunteer hours. You have to put in your shadowing experience. You have to put your research experience. Like it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. That's actually. why. That's why you have to start early. Like. Once they open, even if you're not submitting in May, you start because it's not about your score. It's mm -hmm. about all the other things you have to fill out. So you have to start working on that. Um, 
and then you send in those you get secondaries secondaries are from <laughs> secondaries are from the universities you're applying to so if they have more questions or if they have specific questions they like to ask students that they are considering mm -hmm. they will send you a specific question like Let's say Stanford, they'll ask you like, why Stanford? Uh, they'll ask you like, what do you like about our program? Like specific stuff. Or if they want to know more about you, they can ask you those questions. Mm -hmm. Or if they require like different classes than the generic AMC um, list, then they'll ask you about it. Um, then they'll ask you for like a mini personal statement. So usually like maybe 100 words or less.